Hello everybody, welcome back to Handicap Golf. Now, I've owned a SkyTrack launch monitor for about nine months and I've been using it to help me become a better golfer. Now, the game improvement plan that you can get with SkyTrack comes with a variety of features. However, it's a combination of those features that I've been using in kind of a training schedule um, or a practice routine that's actually helped me get down to uh, single figures with my golf handicap, which I'm absolutely buzzing about. So what I want to do today is just share with you my SkyTrack training schedule, my training routine. Um, hopefully it'll give you guys a couple of ideas of how you could maybe use the SkyTrack to improve your golf game as well. So stay tuned, don't forget, subscribe to Handicap Golf. So I'd like to start my practice routine by heading over to the SkyTrack range and I'm just going to do a little warm-up. Now, obviously the intention of a warm-up is just for me to loosen up a little bit but I also like to use this time to make sure my SkyTrack is aligned correctly. Now, because of the small space of my setup, it means that I have to uh, pick the SkyTrack up and store it somewhere each time I want to have a go on the golf sim. So that ultimately means that I have to align my SkyTrack each time that I'm playing. Now, if anybody wants to know how I go about aligning my SkyTrack each time, then please click on the card in the top corner. Um, that's just a little video I've done of a very quick and simple way to align your SkyTrack. So what I like to do is, just for the warm-up, I like to hit 10 wedge shots. Um, I'll hit four half swing shots, then I'll hit four three-quarter swing shots, and I'll finish off with two full swings. There you go, there is the first no read of this session. Um, so I'm not sure how many balls I hit in total altogether, but um, I hit a fair few, and I think I have about three or four no reads out of this one hour practice session on the SkyTrack, so keep your eyes peeled for them. There's uh, there's a lot of people who worry about SkyTrack um, getting no reads a lot, um, but I don't think it's too bad, but anyway. Obviously, I'm using this just to get a feel, loosen up a little bit, and ultimately make sure my SkyTrack is aligned properly. After the warm-up, um, what I like to do is try and concentrate on hitting some fairways. So I head over to the fairway section of the SkyTrack range, and I choose the medium fairway because I'm not super accurate at the moment. Um, and I just like to choose the highest club that I can hit. Now I used to be able to hit driver when I had my outdoor setup, but now that I'm indoors, I can only comfortably hit a six iron. And there's the second no read of the session. Anyway, um, I like this part of the SkyTrack range because as you've just seen, you can select how difficult you want it to be. Now I chose the medium width fairway. And all I do here is I'm going to hit 10 shots with the longest club that I can uh, and aim to get the ball into the fairway 7 out of those 10 times. So I'm aiming for um, an accuracy of 70%. Now if I achieve that then fantastic. Uh, if I don't achieve that then yeah that's something that I need to work on and then later on in the session I can always go back to finding some fairways and maybe working on a few swing tips. Now at this stage of my practice, I'm not too worried about my carry distances, um, although it is a very good opportunity to work on your ball striking. Um, like I say, I'm not too worried. I like to hit my 6 iron between 170 and 180 carry, um, but again, I'm still warming up a little bit. I'm still hitting some full swing shots, um, and the main focus of this is just finding those fairways. So as you can see, um, on this session it's actually come down to the last shot and I just had to find the fairway to make it over 70% uh, so made it by the skin of my teeth. Now this is the main chunk of my SkyTrack practice. I absolutely love the skills assessment section um, that's in the game improvement plan. Now, if anybody doesn't know much about this, um, I have also done a video on a skills assessment and a dynamic handicap, so click the card in the top right-hand corner. 
Um, but briefly, you basically select as many clubs as you want, and you can select the distances or the yardage that you hit each of those clubs. Now, I like to do um, a six iron all the way through to a sand wedge. So I select the carry distances that I like to hit each of those clubs, um, and I like to hit five shots per club. So as you can see, I'm starting off here, it looks like I'm hitting a nine iron. And I like to carry my 9 iron around about 140 yards, so that's quite a good shot to start with, I think. Um, now, what I really like about the skills assessment is that it gives you something called a dynamic handicap. Uh, and if you can see in the centre of the screen towards the top, after each shot that you hit, it gives you a handicap for that shot. Um, now it ranges from like 36 which is the highest handicap and the worst shots um, all the way down to plus four um, so what I like to do I, I play off nine my current handicap is nine um, so at the end of this the full skills assessment Skytrack will average out all of your shots and it will calculate your dynamic handicap for that particular session so if I can get anything less than nine on my dynamic handicap then I'm absolutely buzzing with that and it's been a success. If I'm having an off day um, and I get more than my handicap, then obviously I've got a few things that I need to go and work on. Uh, I can always maybe look at some YouTube videos or uh, have a few lessons with the, the pro at my local golf club uh, and just telling the little things that I've identified that I might be doing, whether I'm pushing things or a bit of a slice or a hook, whatever it may be. There's the third no read of the session. Um, so yeah, I'm quite a lot of shots in now and just to have three no reads is nothing nothing too major. It doesn't bother me too much. Anyway, um, I have skipped quite a lot of that uh, skills assessment because it's pretty long and you're probably a bit bored if you're going to watch all of it, if you're not bored already. Um, so anyway, just want to say about um, ball striking. This is a massive... Um, thing you can work on in the skills assessment obviously if you're going to be hitting your carry distances um, then you're going to be need to you're going to be needing to strike the ball correctly if you're hitting shots fat you're never going to carry the distance um, and you can see your ball flights and you can see your spin numbers and all that sort of stuff um, so yeah just one extra thing there that you can really work on in this skills assessment is looking at your ball striking now here is the final page. Um, as you can see, I had a pretty good session here. Um, my dynamic handicap is 5.5, and considering that my handicap in real life is a nine, I'll take that. I'm quite happy with an 80% accuracy. To finish off my practice session, I like to work on those money shots in golf, the wedges. And again, I will head back over to the Skytrack range and for this feature, I like to use the, the randomizer on the Skytrack, which is probably my second most favorite uh, feature on the software, to be honest. It's great. It allows you to set a minimum distance and a maximum distance, and Skytrack will choose yardages in between those two distances for you to hit. Now, you can also choose your difficulty level and what size greens you would like to hit. I used to aim for the medium size greens, um, just because it gave me a little bit more success. But I actually got a comment from one of my subscribers on the channel and he said to me, why don't I aim for the hardest greens, the smallest greens, um, just to challenge myself a little bit more. Um, so that's what I've been doing recently. And what, it's, what I've found is um, it enables me to just work on minor little swing tweaks with my wedges. And it's something that I've never really done before. Um, but obviously when it comes to your wedge play, you've got to be super accurate 
you've got to try and dial in those numbers and you've got to make sure that your your ball is going exactly where you're aiming it to give you a chance at getting that birdie, getting that par, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, like you can see from the green that I'm aiming for here, it's a little bit shorter to the left of the pin and it's a little bit longer to the right of the pin. Uh, so depending on the yardage that Skytrack gives me, um, I can check i can just tweak it up a little bit uh, sometimes just to hit the green i might aim a little bit left of the pin or i might aim a little bit right of the pin anyway um enough of all that waffle uh, to summarize on this final section of my practice i set the distances that i would like to hit in between i set the difficulty um i'm going to hit 20 wedge shots altogether and personally i'm aiming for a 50 percent success rate now if you set a lower difficulty level then you might want to aim for a higher success rate um, but just go for whatever you feel most comfortable with if you feel comfortable with only hitting 25 percent of the greens then give yourself that target if you want to challenge yourself a bit more then set yourself a 70 75 percent success rate that part is completely up to you but i feel comfortable at this difficulty level trying to hit 50% of the greens. There was the, the fourth and the final no read of this session. Um, so I just worked it out actually. Um, for this practice session, I hit 70 shots altogether, and four of those shots were no reads. Now, some people obviously don't like that, um, but for a launch monitor that is the price of Skytrack, I can handle four shots that don't pick up um, out of 70. So I think that's like a, a 5% no read rate or something like that so i can handle that so as you can see i haven't quite made my percentage um but yeah it's a very tough one to hit this hard green anyway guys um that's my practice session for skytrack it lasts about an hour uh, and as I said before, I hit about 70 shots. So I hope that it's given you a few ideas about how can how you can improve your golf game using your Skytrack launch monitor. Um, please comment down below if anybody has any different ideas of how they practice on the Skytrack. And don't forget to subscribe to Handicap Golf. <laughs>